Welcome back to another Team Solomon Circus Live Duel. Today on the left side we have Sprite, as well as on the right side we have Guru, uh, or also known as Sub Terror Control. Before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. As you guys can see, most of you guys are not subscribed, so it'd be greatly appreciated. And well, let's dive in. We're gonna see Sub Terror here go first, starting off with a pot of extravagance here, shuffling up that extra deck. Then choosing six cards here, they're going to respond to with Ash Blossom as well. So no draws for us. Making sure that there are some, some uh, Dragoons left. We're going to be chaining a D-Shifter here. Then we're going to activate a Red Eyes Fusion. We're going to see the... Uh, The LOB and it looks like an ulti getting vanished there. Let's go for a, a Dragoon. Very powerful card. I don't know how I feel about playing it versus in, in the Shizu tier format, but looks like we're just passing on Dragoon here. You see a special summon of Kashira Fenrir. Can I get the effect? If we choose to negate that, um, they're going to be free to play whatever they want to play. So we choose not to here, so they're adding that friend rear. Friend rear does target, so you know, Dragoon is protected from it. We see a Moonlight Chill in the hand as well. As well as it looks like an Ash Blossom, too. They're going to just pass their turn, I believe. We're going to act the effect, making that Fenrir go away, taking the tw 24. Entering the battle phase and attacking for, you know, 3,000. That's going to be, you know, 54,000 life points taken. Setting one card and setting on back row and passing. You know, Shifter is no longer alive there, so maybe it saved us for the turn. We're going to see the Fenrir being special summoned. And then we're going to see a normal summon of the blue. Special summoning out of the jet. And activating the jet effect. And here we're thinking, but, you know, we're going to let that go through. Because we can always negate the smashes if they add it anyways. Depending on what that set card is, though, you know, it can possibly win them the game. You're going to see Smashers being added there, you know. Trying to threaten out that Dragoon. I see a Link 2 going for the uh, Dark. And is it, like, it looks like we're trying to negate the summon here. Or said think on summon. Or think if summon's successful. Is it maybe a thing that maybe it's a judgment or a strike? I'm not too sure. Looks like we're gonna strike the summon. Strike the effect. You're going to set one card and pass. Here we're going to flip the guru and act for the effect. It's going to get Ash Blossom. Then we get to choose to negate here. You know, if they have that Smashers on the field, we're... Pretty much done for. We're going to choose to negate that. Or we're choosing to negate the smashers, it looks like. 
Let's say we're gonna enter the activating the effect of Guru. He's going to chain the uh, chain there. That's gonna be game one. As you know, as you can see that I can't even believe it that you know Dragoon two years or three years after its release is still able to you know be on par with with like Sprite. I mean, a lot of the time, if you if you stop the normal summon and flip it face down, or you just you remove that level two off the field, Sprite does struggle a lot. If they do have a starter or something like an extender, you know, it, it is quite difficult. But they have to obviously have the extender. Same thing as Zoo, right? Zoo is a powerful deck, but. One Book of Moon could just stop the deck completely. Unless they had Barrage. There's some siding in there. Using the beautiful oversleeve, uh, the hero sleeves. I like how they did it a lot. It gave like the Miracle Fusion kind of like an ulti effect. Very well done. You also see Charizard, you know. His favorite Pokemon, we saw from the deck box as well as the, the map. And the field center there. You know, even if you're playing Yu-Gi-Oh, you can still like your favorite Pokemons. Doing some siding in, you know, making sure that we do not see any of those uh those doubles. Now Guru is very they go one for one a lot of the time, so you know getting not getting one of those effects go uh extravagance go off is extremely difficult. And most likely here we're gonna see the sprite player go first. We're gonna start off by normal some of the angler, not very good, especially something with blue. You know, especially you know, are adding the jet, just gonna be able to push himself and add. They going for the smashers, or they they are going for the smashers here. We're gonna see an overlay into gigantic, activating the effect of gigantic. You know, sending that jet to special someone out. It's gonna be a red, a carrot, or an Iperia here, so we're gonna be able to draw one card. We do see a lightning storm there. Interesting that they sided in lightning storm going first. You know, possibly not having any other cards I can. We're gonna see elf. And elf's gonna summon back the Iperia there, you know. No better targets. Linking them away off into the IP. A very, very powerful card. You see set two and a pass. Keeping that call by the grave in hand as well. Then activate the Lord of Heavenly Prison here. Setting two cards and passing. Setting a monster card as well. Showing the Lord there. You know, it prevents all set cards, including your opponents and monsters, from being targeted and destroyed by card effects. You still can attack into it, but. We're going to attempt to pass here, but, you know, he still has a chance to stay in main phase. You know, he has that elf effect as well as the IP. He's going to activate the elf effect, targeting the Iperia, getting that extra summon there. And the draw. And then, you know, he's going to ask, are we going to pass? We still proceed to end phase. He can activate the IP instead, clicking up to a unicorn there, activating the effect, getting rid of that lightning storm, shuffling back a... The monster, maybe attempting to OTK in the next turn. They're going to activate the starter as well. You know, paying some life points to get out a blue, a jet, or we're going to see a blue here taking the a thousand, one hundred, getting the pixies. Looks like it's going to be an OTK. Then we're going to still proceed to end phase. He's going to draw for turn, especially with that pixies there right off the bat. 
We're showing the Lord's effect. You know, Pixies is very, very good against two set cards. We're going you know, to target the Iperia with Elf, but summon itself, and then getting another draw. We see another uh, starter in hand. That's two starters as well. Two stars and an effect failure, it looks like. Can enter battle phase, and we're going to activate the effect of Tikaboo here. He's going to flip the uh, the smashers there, banishing a starter for cost. And then, you know, Lord will activate on resolution here because the trap was activated. We need to set that pot of extravagance there. Can get rid of a starter in hand as well as the uh he can't actually do that he has to get rid of a level two on field he's getting rid of a blue and getting rid of that there can only be one but we do have a big body on field so now he can't attack out of it and he's going to attempt to activate pixies here we're going to summon strike it, so he's going to take some damage. You know, making it so that he can't, you know, give us... I think that's like, what? That's a 1,000, that's 24. That would be like 40, 46,000 life points damage there. And we are making him waste his pixies. In main phase 2, he's going to go into an IP there. Alright, he's going to go into Avermax and then activate the starter... Avermax is a crazy card. You know, I was playing it. A lot of tier decks are playing it as well, too. You know, just such a crazy card. Hard to out. We're going to see blue being summoned. Blue effects going to activate. You know, he already went through his pixies. He went through his carrots and his jets. And he's going to look for a red. Especially summoning out that red. I think he went through all three blues right now and two of his jets we're going to see a link summon go for an elf and then actually the elf effect summoning out a angler I'm going to go into a soul sweeper omnimaru banishing that uh that lord for the meantime fun fact if a Monster is banished face down and actually remains face down. We're going to activate the extravagance here. You know, going to be banishing six for cost. I believe that that's going to get carroted there. I can't. I can't see why it wouldn't. And it goes through, actually. Getting that draw, too. You know, maybe wanting to keep that Obnimaru in the field over the carrot, over that draw, too, is pretty crazy. We're going to have a second Lord in the hand, setting two cards as well. And they're in the end phase. That Lord's going to come back. It's, it looks like debating setting a monster. Not very good. You know, making your opponent know you have a monster in hand. Unless it's a bait. The last card in hand. Setting a monster and leaving one card in hand. You 
We're going to see him activate the Alpha effect, targeting the red, or targeting the jet. Or, yeah, targeting the red. We're going to chain Call by the Grave, banishing that elf to negate the elf on field as well. And then we're going to see the... Uh, The Lord returning. I'm still amazed that he chose not to negate that extravagance. Chatu is huge in this deck. Do you see a TTT in his hand? I don't think he's going to get the chance to use that myself. Is that a beaver as well? Here we're going to activate the effect of Angler. And he's choosing to face down. And actually, here we flip it face up, which is incorrect. It should remain face down. When cards are temporary banished, they banish the same way they left the field. I see a normal summon of a beaver activating the effect here. Getting out a second beaver. Then we're going to see an overlay with the elf as well as the beaver into a gigantic with 32. Or maybe not. Two beavers going into the sky cavalry here. Going to bounce it back and look like going to try to attack for game. Enter the battle phase, attacking with his Sky, sky Cavalry. Activating the effects, bouncing it back. On the attack of Carrot, we're going to activate the sub tier Finer Battle here. We're going to pick it up and read. We're going to activate the fourth effect. Um, I can't believe that you just can activate a card that really doesn't really do nothing, but it does nothing right now. Like... Subterra cards you control can't be negated. Um, really, it's just an activation so that a lord can be special summoned. And here he's thinking, you know, he can carry that. Maybe. He's gonna carry it, sending the uh, sending the Omni Maru to the graveyard. And it's gonna negate and destroy, sending that trap card to the graveyard there. And here, I think we're just talking about if the Lord will still resolve. A trap card was activated, so it's still gonna come on the field. Don't believe carrot negates activation. I have to read carrot. Real quick. It negates the effects, so the activation is still activated, so Lord will be able to come on the field. We're gonna see a downward and then a Zeus go on top. Very, very powerful here. He's going to pass his turn. If he Zeus is here, he will be losing his Abermax. We're going to see a starter being activated, getting with that jet. Jet's going to activate, but there's no targets in deck. You know, making sure he's able to use that carrot when he needs to. He doesn't want to get rid of that elf for sure. Elf is such a crazy card. Then during the end phase, Fiendus will come back onto the field. But we're going to activate the Extravagance. It does come back during the end phase. We have to choose very wisely because we don't want to banish our Dracoon targets. So here we're only choosing three. And he's not going to negate that, you know, that plot. That plus one because we did set it with the, uh, we set it with the Lord. Here you're gonna activate the elf, summon with the Hyperion, and then you can be able to draw one card. Then we're gonna activate Red Ice Fusion here. He's going to chain the Ash Blossom. Very, very unfortunate. We're just gonna scoop it up there, you know, knowing that yes, he, he does have enough. You 
he did burn through all three starters and I think all his his uh his sprite board but we just we couldn't you know push through it we didn't see any swap frogs there but I wonder what he's gonna take out we we did see lightning storms in the main before when he's going first we see one card oh he looks like he's keeping he has one lightning storm on the side as well so he's putting that in you know most likely going second and taking out potentially a call by the grave or something like that i'm not really sure potentially a ttt even though i would think ttt would probably be a bit better going second against uh sub chair dragoon especially with you know dragoon being able to be stolen or something like that unless ttt targets but i don't think it does It does not target. It just says take control of one card your opponent controls. So being able to steal a Dragoon, most likely a Dragoon that activated its effects. 4,000 attack, that's crazy. You see some shuffling up here, you know. Sprite definitely has the advantage. Even though Dragoon is a powerful card, it does have a lot of outs this format, especially if you mill a piece. We're going to see an extravagance right off the top. Going for that six. And we get that draw two cards. We're going to see a hidden city being activated. Searching for a... Looks like that is a guru. Setting the guru. Activating the effect of hidden city. Flipping it face up, activating the effect of Guru, searching for a Fiendus or a Trap. Any sub terror card of our choice. We're going to see a sub terror final battle being, you know, added to hand. That means we have the Fiendus. Setting one card. You know, forgetting that he has the final battle in our hand. So he lets us, you know, shuffle it up, knowing that we are going to set both of them. And pass. I believe he has a call by the grave in hand at that point. We're going to see a normal summon of a beaver activating the effect here. You know, especially something out another beaver. Then we activate the sub terror final battle here. Or activate the actually it's not sub terror final battle. That's a that is summon limit. It's going to chain the starter. And we're going to chain cherries here. Interesting play. Banishing the uh, the gigantic. And here we get to see his extra deck. And then banish the gigantics he's playing. And here we're going to see jet summon out. We're going to add that smashers. We do have the fiendus negate. He's going to activate the uh, the Temple of Dark Beckoning or something like that. Searching for a Dark Beckoning Beast. And then here we're just going we to... We need to read this. These cards didn't do anything, right? So we pick it up and reread it. He's going to activate these Smashers. We're going to chain Fiend this here. You now he does banish a starter for cost. Flipping that Guru face down. But you set two cards and uh, pass. We're going to flip the, f uh, the final battle, flipping it face up, being able to draw our search for during his end phase. Searching for a Fiendus. They're going to draw for turn. We're going to activate Red Eyes Fusion here. And we do have it protected by that Fiendus. We're going to activate the Solemn Judgment, but we cannot negate that. 
Yeah, but he, that is going to push him down to less than 4,000 life points. You know, he did activate starter there. Can activate the effect of Guru here. Flipping the jet face down. Can activate the effect of starter here. Potentially getting a red on the field. That's what I'm going to believe. Yep, getting a red. You know, trying to negate that, uh, that Guru or Fiendus. Or making us wasted, I should say. We're going to activate the effect of Hidden City, flipping it face up. And it looks like we're debating on activating the effect there. We're going to activate the effect. He's going to chain red. We're going to chain Fiendus. The wording on Fiendus is very, very weird. It makes you almost think that, you know, that red gets flipped face down. And see, Guru's going to add a Fiendus, but we know we did just burn through two Fiendises. Then I see Hidden uh, Final Battle flip up that Guru. Entering Battle Phase and attacking into the face down jet there. Going to draw for turn. He's going to look like he's going to overlay right off the bat for a gigantic. But he doesn't have one. So he's going to go for that mannequin cat. Which I believe doesn't have that much attack. He's going to read the final battle there. Gigantic actually has 2,000. So he's going to enter battle phase. Um, you know, ask for the effect. And we're going to double our attack. Making it 32, it doesn't double, it, it adds, and, you know, 16 plus 18 is 32. We see an angler in hand as well. There's not much you can do against floodgates, and that's part of the, part of the reason why the deck is so good, right? And here, he's just going to scoop it up, you know, knowing that, you know, there's not enough. Unfortunately, Guru is just too glue eater for, for the deck, and he went through his smashers. And unfortunately, that's how the game goes. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Peace.